Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to usher you into the weekend. Uh, learn more about Missoula, and uh, today's, some of today's topics that we're going to be talking about is employment in Missoula. Maybe it's not just the employee, but maybe it's the employer trying to find the thousand jobs that are unfilled in the city of Missoula. We also have uh, some public safety and health stuff and some more uh, with city council. We got some news, which talks about fake news. We also have Flagship Friday, and we got pre-critic today. So let's uh, start things off with a little bit of weather. Yesterday, it rained a lot. Today, it's supposed to snow quite a bit. So you have that uh, winter advisory r warning happening until 11 a.m. this morning. But, uh, you know, if you haven't been out and about already this morning, be aware that there might be some patches of black ice. I know that because I almost slipped on it this morning. Um, <laughs> your highs are going to be 34. Your lows are going to be uh, 22. But uh, this weekend, your uh, temperatures are pretty much going to be pretty much um, stagnant that way throughout the whole entire week weekend with 40% chances of snow. Uh, Sunday you might see a slight chance of uh, snow showers, but then it's going to be mostly cloudy. Um, Sunday night, uh, you have the 80% chance of snow with lows into the 20s and highs into 30 pretty much all weekend long. You know, not much happening in terms of that, but let's take a look at our um, snow report so you guys know w whether or not it's good to go to some of these ski, re ski resorts and um, yeah, ski places. Um, I, I don't know uh, the other words for ski resort. So Maverick Mountain, you have 20, uh, they, ha they had 10 inches in the last 72 hours. Bridge Bowl had 9 inches in the last 24 hours. Whitefish had 5 inches. Uh, Discovery just had 6 inches of fresh new snow in the last 24 hours. Montana Snow Bowl had 6 inches in the last 24 hours. Big Sky Resort had 5. So it seems pretty... Uh, Stagnant, there's a lot of fresh powder out. Uh, if you guys are planning on going skiing or snowboarding this weekend in any of these places, Showdown Montana had four inches, Blacktail Mountain had three inches, Red Lodge had two inches, um, Trenton Ski Pass area still has nothing, no uh, information available. Lost Trail looks like um, they are starting to open up their um, place as well in terms of good snow. So there's some good snow for you guys. Um, as I said before, fake news is all the rage these days, and a panel of journalists and uh, data gatherers in a post-Trump era discussed how the trend of fake news has been around for a while, but not in the way that you may think. Here is Dennis Weibold. He's a journalist and professor at the University of Montana, and uh, MCAT did a live stream uh, through Humanities Montana of this. Hit hover of a discussion when somebody just says, that's fake news. That means I don't like the story, I, I disagree with your reality, there's no evidence that we can use to talk about and come to any sort of agreement about this stuff. It's it's almost just a way to end an argument. It's like when you were on the, on the playground when you were a kid and you went, no, 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 I don't want to hear that, or that's a lie, 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 lie. It's, it's become a blanket sort of way to dismiss and, and end a conversation about <coughs> facts, and and I think that's a that's a that's a that's bad for democracy. It's bad for conversation. It's bad for uh, a community of ideas for people to sort of make some progress about uh, about areas that they need to make some progress about. So this same survey, I think the same poll, so that I, I felt glad to hear that most Americans, or the majority of them in that poll, thought that that fake news meant a knowing. Uh, you know, perpetration of inaccurate information. But about 40% of conservatives or Republicans in this group say it meant any criticism of a person in power or, the, or a party in power. And that's difficult for me as a journalism professor, and I'm sure for Kathy too, because we know that if, if what we do matters, we have to ask questions. We have to question authority. We have to watch have a watchdog role that we play, and you really can't do that uh, if, uh, if, the, if, the, if the powers that be are, are just sort of dismissing the, the ground under which you walk. Uh, you have no, no influence, no power to, to even make an argument or offer facts because that's just uh, not important. It's not worth listening to. All right, so that was uh, Dennis Weibold. He is a professor at the University of Montana for uh, journalists, um, and he's been doing that for 15 years. So th he was one of the many panelists talking about fake news, and that was one of the things that MCAT will be airing on MCAT in the next coming weeks. So in state news, let's move on over to another camera. Um, a group of advocacy organizations is pushing back on a recent
recent announcement that a Bighorn County attorney plans on cracking down on drug use among pregnant, pregnant women. While well, Article 2, Section 3 of the Montana Constitution, which provides a inalienable, inalienable rights to protect safety and happiness among other provisions, a new direction in the state law being uh, spearheaded by Bighorn County uh, Attorney Jay Harris um, would begin an immediate crackdown on pregnant women using drugs or alcohol, starting with a restraining order. If a woman has found uh, to have violated the restraining order, Harris's office would pursue civil prosecutions against those expecting mothers rather than criminal charges. The ACLU, which issued a press release on behalf of the nine organiza on behalf of nine organizations, sent a letter to Harris saying that the, his new policy violated, at a minimum, the privacy, equal protection, dignity, and due process protections laid out in the state constitution as well as the Montana Human Rights Act's prohibition on discrimination based on sex and pregnancy. Jay Harris has received this letter and stated, we'll address legal issues at such time as may be appropriate, either in a courtroom through or through legal filings. In national news, healthcare workers who want to refuse to treat patients because of religious or moral beliefs will have a new defender in the Trump administration. Doctors, nurses, and people in healthcare are getting protection from individuals that they believe are immoral or have a religious belief that can turn around and get them sued. Um, the establishment of this division re reverses an Obama-era policy that barred health care workers from refusing to treat transgender individuals or people who have had or are seeking abortions. The new division won't have to wait to get to work. A pediatric nurse at the Winnebago County Health Department in Illinois filed a complaint with the HHS on Tuesday because she... Uh, objects to her employer requiring that she be trained to make referrals to providers of abortion services or to help women get abortion drugs, according to the Rockford Register Star. A bill called the uh, Conscience Protection Act to codify the rules will be discussed in the future as Roe v. Wade is going on their 45th year since passed allowed women to get abortions. While this bill would protect those who do not want to take part in the abortion services and referrals in the healthcare sector. So that's what's happening in the news uh, today. I have some new programs for you guys airing on MCAT, and we're going to um, kick things off with, uh, let's see here, some nice um, music, uh, agriculture, and some really um, interesting talks uh, about uh, the uh, food stamps and the farm bill and whatnot. So these are some of the programs that will be airing on MCAT this weekend. So uh, you can watch them online, or you, you could uh, watch them on our channel, 189. Well, how much did you pay for a prescribed burning per acre and so on? And hopefully we'll be able to summarize this across that and put all that into the best management practices. And of course, <clears throat> there'll be a list of technologies that may help you with this from LIDAR and so on, we'll, that will be in there. And then the linkage to monitoring, of course, and then I'll also make sure that all the climate change information is integrated throughout the entire document. So uh, right now it looks like that Diana is going to lead the effort and she is going to uh, do the uh, a four, uh, article in a peer-reviewed journal for the best management practices that will have a summary of all those and then there will be a GTR that will come out which I will uh, uh, lead that will have all the detail that you will need that we uh, gathered throughout and so the, there'll be a, both a forest article and a GTR that will summarize all the best management practices that we came up.
Now there have been efforts in the past to decouple the nutrition title with the, the title that deals with uh, production agriculture. Um, they have not been successful in doing that. I am sure that there will be attempts to do that in this farm bill coming up. I don't think they will be successful again, but Congress is very unpredictable, so one never knows. Uh, but uh, one of the real advantages that you have when you put both titles together is you can get a voting block that will work together to get a farm bill passed that, that helps everybody in rural America and urban America. This is the other activity that we did over the summer and that we'll continue to do um, is beating. And how you do beating, which again I learned in like June, uh, is you have a material that you're beating on. It's called Pellon. Um, I think traditionally it would be made out of, you know, like a really soft raw hide. Uh, and then you put the centerpiece in there, which is the cab, is what it's called. And then you kind of, you, you lace the beads around it. So you kind of tie them down and then go and then tie them down and then go and then tie them down. Um, these were bow, I don't know if those ones are made by kids. Those ones may have been made by adults. Uh, but the process generally is, I make the, so the centerpiece, the cab, is laser cut on the laser cutter. Uh, we had a number of different animals and images from the Flathead Biological Station. They were all, they, they designed them, they have a, flat, a, a laser cutter and a bunch of other really neat tools. And so those designs were made by somebody at the Flathead Biological Station, which is a really nice local tie-in because that's right up on the Flathead Lake. Uh, and then the kids would glue them to the pelon and beat around them. And again, there will be somebody there to help them learn how beading works. They get to learn about the different materials that um, you would beat on, and then have think of things like you know, if you want to make a necklace out of it, how would you watch do that? it? And it's you know put on YouTube, which is really cool, and the flagship program shares it also. So I think it's just a great opportunity for kids to show their creativity and explore things and opportunities that they might not have access to normally. So we're almost entirely grant funded. We also get a decent percentage of the alcohol tax from the state of Montana. Nice. Which is, yeah, it's very exciting that we're able to receive most of that. But we mostly go off of grants and donations. So um, donations are always welcomed in any form. All right, just so you guys know, we have a flagship Friday video of the week coming up later in the show. So stay with stay with uh, stay with us then. But you got to bear with me now with pre-critic. New movies are coming out this weekend, and uh, the in the vein of movies, there have been uh, numbers following titles come twelve strong. A story about twelve guys hanging out in Afghanistan after 9/11. Never forget as they work with the locals to deal with the Taliban insurgency in the regions. The guy from Thor is in this movie and he is riding a horse for some reason. Uh, watch this movie about a pro-military theme about American soldiers shooting terrorists. I'm sure there's more to it, like uh, where people in the country who were not associated with the Taliban, but at the time were blamed, uh, were blamed as a country for a few pissed off groups did. So, uh, of course, I'm not allowed to get, get political about it, but it's a little late for this movie time scale. Um, up next, there's a Den of Thieves, a gritty crime saga which follows the lives of an elite unit of L.A. County Sheriff Department and the state's most successful bank robbery crew. Ooh, state's successful bank robbery crew. They're famous as the outlaws plan to seemingly impossible heights on the Federal Reserve Bank. Gerald Butler is in this film. Remember when he used to be the guy that he was going to be like the next Harrison Ford? There's been like 20 next Harrison Fords, but not really happening. Um, anyways, this heist movie is where things go wrong and someone has to get away or at least get off somehow. It follows the bank robbers, then one of them you follow. So the whole idea is if you're watching one of these kind of heist movies and it's through the perspective of the bank robbers, there's always that one person who uh, has a happy ending while everyone else kind of gets screwed over. And then if you're like watching it from like the cops perspective, they're the ones that usually catch the bad guys. And usually all the bad guys like die. If it's from the perspective of the cops then all the bad guys usually just end up dying in a blaze of glory so anyways the next movie is basically another hallmark movie that just got stretched out uh in terms of budget a country music star comes home to the love he left behind and that's basically the, the synopsis like the synopsis is like really short so basically the, the movie is about a guy who uh 
well, you know, like maybe high school sweetheart, went on to be a country music star, comes back. Um, basically, um, you'll probably be able to find the music from this uh, movie on like CDs and a Starbucks or whatever. All right, so he goes back to find trouble when connecting with his girl because there's always another guy. He goes back to his like, oh, she seems like, oh, it's so good to see her. Oh, wait a minute, there's another guy in the picture. So basically, he has to take this girl from another guy at the end through efforts of love and country love songs so yeah i mean the, the, the usually the last movie is always always like scraping the bottom of the bottom of the barrel but i, I usually try, like to uh, have it around three movies but it's flagship friday and uh, you know what that means it's the flagship friday friday video of the week and when we come back i got all your city council needs to uh tell you about the employment problem here in the city of missoula Okay, today, class, I am your substitute. You only have one calculator. I... Anyway, here are the rules. So, every time you misbehave, you have to read one whole book. And I will keep adding on to it if you keep goofing off. Go back to where you were. Now. One book. Now. Get through that. More book for Okay. Does anyone know the answer? <gasps> Seat. Now. Does anyone know the answer? All right, guys, let's kick things off with a little bit of your city council. The city council, you can find out by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Missoula City. Hey, <laughs> want to find out what's going on with the city of Missoula and the government? Go on to ci.missoula.mt.us for all your city of Missoula needs. It's... Uh, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. But let's kick things off with the Committee of the Whole. Quarterly updates to the City Council on activities of the Missoula Economic Partnership. Here's James Grunke. He is the CEO and President of the Missoula Economic Partnership, and he talks about housing and jobs. So here is a nice little overview about the housing and jobs here in Missoula. Concurrently, you can't do a workforce study without addressing housing in, in Missoula County. And if we can't we can't attract a work attract a worker to our community if they don't have a place they can live so for again the last six months we've partnered with the organization of realtors to do the unattainable housing study which is going to be released to the public on june 30th i'm assuming all of you have been uh, invited but if not you're invited um, this was a not just MOR and MEP, but Aaron Peehan served on the steering committee. There is a, a large amount of demographic information that's been prepared, prepared, and there's been a robust section on policy recommendations. And that's the next step of all kind of working together how this happens uh, over the next coming months. And I know I was at the Chamber of Commerce um, 
board meeting this morning and, and both Heidi and Julie were talking about this exact issue, and it, it is an important one. And so these are kind of the – All right, so that's um, James Grunke, and he talks a, bit, a little bit more um, on this and employment here in the city of Missoula, of course. The last time I did talk about this was a couple months ago since this is a quarterly update, and he he was the one that was talking pretty much the same thing last time. Um, so uh, there's plenty of jobs here in Missoula, but there's just no place for people to live to do those jobs to work in Missoula. So a lot of that, James talks about the people and businesses that, that have been able to not only get jobs, but uh, solving retention issues that are happening in the city of Missoula. It's always been a real difficult aspect um, in us telling our story, but now because of this business retention effort, we're now being able to tell a little bit more who we're working with. And when we took over the state of Montana's grant program, which is called the Big Sky Trust Fund, which rewards companies for job creation, these become public knowledge. And so we can now talk about companies in Missoula that are rece receiving state of Montana grant dollars that we are working with to grow and expand. And we have right now up to $7,500 per eligible job uh, a company can receive. And we have a little over $2 million of state money being deployed to Missoula and Missoula County through this program. All and right. So um, the, this is the, uh, the money that they receive for these programs are through grants. And a lot of times uh, the big issue this year especially is that the grants aren't being done this year. Uh, there wasn't enough money to put in the budget for uh, having providing uh, money so they can j help generate more jobs in some of these businesses that get grants, but the next couple of years they should be getting more of a yearly grant. But let me tell you about the problems with grants. Let me lay it down. They're a good way to grow, but they're not a good way to fall back on. Unless you have a plan to expand and grow with the money that you're getting, then the job depends on the company getting the grant in the first place. So here's James talks about how people can get their jobs through these programs and more. We try to primarily work with a, a business that's a, the, that we call a primary job. And that means that they produce the good or service here, they export it out of the state of Montana, and they import the dollars. Those are really kind of the criteria that we look for. Um, and as well as the, the Big Sky Trust Fund, actually 50% or more of their revenue has to be generated from outside of Montana. And we do the same thing. And we also have some wage requirements that we're generally looking at. Um, for the Big Sky Trust Fund, it's roughly around just shy of $19 an hour. Um, and we try to generally use that as our threshold as well. And it's not that we're against service sector or retail jobs. It's just not what people have said we're willing to pay you to do. Now, there is no business that we will not take a phone call from. Um, and oftentimes the reason people call us is they just don't know where else to go. And, and we're just trying to provide information because we actually want everybody to be successful. All and right. So um, many um – Missoula Economic Partnership, like I said, is it's easily accessible. You can go to missoulapartnership.org for more information about this and how to connect with other businesses. 55,000 to 65,000 jobs in the last five years in job growth, but that's just a ballpark according to James Grunke. He believes that the Missoula success is from job creation, whether it's through Missoula Economic Partnership or the businesses that incentivize the county, which aren't necessarily much, but James talks about the thousand jobs in Missoula that are currently vacant. And we're not reinventing a wheel. We actually looked at a very successful program in Billings and how they fund it and operate it and are doing something very similar to how it worked there. And so right now there's not a i apologize for the sports analogies there's not the quarterback to be managing all this in our community there's nobody and so that was one of the things that was identified somebody needs to do it it became mep because we're the ones who kind of put our hand up and said hey there's a barrier here we need to figure out mm -hmm. and so likely um it would come within our organization over the next i think the board is hoping by the first six months of the year, the, this position is funded and hired and put to work. Excellent. Thank you very much. That'll it kind of seems to me that uh, through the economic partnership and all these businesses through here is that the, a lot of times um, 
it does not necessarily an employee issue, the people looking for a job. It's an employee, employer issue when it comes to hiring some people who are looking for said job. Because I know a bunch of people who are in the process of looking for pretty much any kind of job out there and just not getting it. So, um, and most of the jobs that they're at, they're looking for don't require um, too much of a commitment. So, anyways, up next we got some land use and planning. Historic preservation um, is a was a big topic just last year, and right now they're giving it. There was an update on how the uh, uh, historic preservation uh, committee works and how it evolves an explanation of the pr uh, purpose and mission the structure and the membership of HPC will be given the presentation will lay the ba base of a background knowledge so that they will re revise historic uh, preservation demolition permit ordinance is introduced in the council at the end of January um, new council members will have a frame of reference and basically updating the ordinance to be able to tear down historic buildings in Missoula um, but on, but on an interesting note, um, rivals uh, amongst historic buildings such as New Orleans. So um, in the National Registry, you can uh, register a building at, in the National uh, Historic Registry, and Butte has just as many buildings as New Orleans. Just It's kind of funny to think about that. But of course, let's throw to a quote. This is Amy Shearer, Historic Preservation Officer, talks about how buildings get registered when they are owned by a government or public school. Assuming it plays. <laughs> Which raises a whole host of sort of questions and opportunities. And I guess I'm just wondering how. All right. I, I, we'll get to it in a second. This is a question. Yeah. No, that's a really good question. So there's two layers there. To be in a historic district, um, like I mentioned, within the the proposed boundaries of a new historic district, every building in that district will be surveyed as to whether it's contributing or whether it's not contributing. And that's just good practice. Um, and then some you know, local municipal codes will go in deeper. I know Bozeman does, and they actually have different guidelines for their contributing buildings. We don't. So we only dealing with individually listed buildings. Then another exception on top of that is any other governmental agency that owns it, we don't participate. So they are they're on their own. They don't have to go under any of our regulation. So follow up. So, All so right. So um, basically, a lot of times uh, when you or when you're putting up a historic building for this matter and that matter, historic preservation, a lot of times, um, like she said, is that uh, the government has to basically register themselves. And with the historic preservation councils, like uh, in, here in Missoula, um, it seems to I mean like it seems to be changing a lot and they seem to be having some issues in terms of like historic preservation versus uh, development and also working with the private owners who own the buildings that's considered historic uh, historical uh, buildings as well and just trying to evolve through that. Brian Von Lossberg was talking about Hawthorne School which will be taken out of MCPS school district as they move forward to the new school and um, expanding their 2020 initiative at MCPS and he talks about getting uh, reuse out of some of uh, these old buildings as well. We have lost a lot of a lot of that with 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 blight where we could have adaptively reused some buildings. I think a great example would be um, it's not in the downtown district but but the new cidery is a good example of of uh, adaptive reuse which was originally i would assume seen as blight um so those types of programming things are what we aim for but we have to get those on the ground and rolling um and then all right so that was just a, a briefly uh, quote about reuse in the city of missoula of what happened of course the whole minion is about historic preservation and it's available at ci um, um ci.missoula.mt.us under the webcast videos for land use and planning. So you can watch this video at any time. It gives a nice little background about historic preservation as a whole. I just try to get quotes which refer to um, some of the um, issues and some of the things that people uh, you know, don't really think about rather than the stuff that's already been talked about. I just didn't want to rehash a lot of the same stuff I've been talking about. So um, up next, we got some public safety and health. Um, Alan Leahy, director and health officer, talks about uh, preventative care in terms of health care in the city of Missoula. 
But one of the distinctive aspects of working with the maternal child health popu maternal child population is that is the most opportune time to present to prevent those things that happen largely in the environment or in the family setting due to sometimes factors that aren't in their control and sometimes factors that we can assist with. That's where you prevent, I mean, that's where chronic disease starts. Obesity doesn't start at age 20, and smoking doesn't start at age, you know. And, and the mind development and the, the, the things that happen are really zero to three. So this particular cut to targeted case management, they lose some leverage of the rest of our resources that you provide for us. Um, but they lose, I, I would say squander, that prime opportunity for prevention. All right, so um, that this is uh, this was during public safety and health meeting. Missoula City County Health Assessment has been released in terms of data collected about Missoula health and demographics of homelessness, single family, childhood obesity, and air, air quality as factors about the, the trends of certain areas and how development of um, children and the way that the family is and the way like how many smokers are in a family. So this is a big, huge uh, thing that happened and was also released here in the state of Missoula. You can find that on the county website by uh, – I think it's uh, ci. No, it's co. Missoula. Mt. Us because it's County of Missoula, Montana, Us. So do that. Um, Ellen. Um, she also talks about the health department can sway outdoor activities in schools, but it's hard to uh, have space needed for PE and recreation activities, especially during the smoky seasons outside. Right. So ten minutes. Mm -hmm. You've probably been papered by email that the community health, the new community health assessment for Missoula County is... A wait, wait, hold on one second. That's the wrong quote. Here's the right quote. The amount of smoke and the longer period of smoke is causing us to realize that continuing to give passive guidance it can only get us so far. So we hope to continue to address that. <clears throat> Once we get, we did a brief debriefing in in house after this event, and we're now starting out on what I've just described. And then I've had only very preliminary talks with the schools about once we get our feet on the ground with this planning, then visiting with the schools in a more organized fashion to talk with them about both the messaging and, where possible, what they can do in their individual buildings or perhaps in new buildings. So it, my answer goes beyond messaging, but it's, it's all right. So the the biggest issue when it when it comes to uh, promoting outdoor and fun and uh, physical activity for kids is that um, if it's smoky outside, then making the kids go outside um, and they're developing lungs could also be a, a root cause of asthma. Um, so that's one of the things. It's like, oh, I want my kid to be active, but I also don't want my kid to get asthma. But it's also really smoky outside. So how am I supposed to find? That? So a lot of times it's the space available for a lot of kids to be able to be active in a inside school environment rather than the outdoor environment, which could be fairly uh, unhealthy to hazardous in terms of smoky conditions, especially during the early September. And and what uh, one of the quotes that they were talking about is that a lot of times the smoke has a tendency to leave uh, the city of Missoula and the uh, surrounding areas by usually early end of September, early October. And by then, it usually is too cold for a lot of kids to be out and about. But that's just one of the things that were discussed with the public safety and health and the public safety and health committee meetings are usually happening at the uh, city county health department on Thursdays. I believe that they're happening, uh, I want to say a second and fourth Thursday of the month, but you m may want to check on their website as well. It's citycountyhealthdepartment.com uh, or .gov. I'm <laughs> All right. So... <laughs> I'm just going to just like gloss over that completely. So moving on, let's, uh, I got uh, some PS, I got a nice little short PSA for you guys. Um, we have our Saturday drop-ins this Saturday. So here's a nice little short uh, video for you guys to help get your, um, get you excited for our Saturday drop-ins tomorrow from one to five.
Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about some events that are happening here in the city of Missoula. Kicking things off is your all your indoor sports and gymnastics stuff. Missoula, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics, and Roots also all do all sorts of uh, indoor gymnastics and foam pits, f all for your kids who are uh, learning to walk and move their bodies. All starting at 9:30 and going until about noon today as well. Uh, Tiny Tales and Story Time is at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10:30 a.m. this morning. Um, and if you stick around long enough, you could do some watercolor and yarn starting at 12:30 at the Missoula Public Library. And if you want to break off and go do play some cribbage or bridge, Missoula Senior Center around 1230 is doing um, cribbage and bridge. Um, open house in the makerspace, but Missoula Public Library open time allows visitors to explore the resources of Missoula's makerspace, learn how to use the equipment like uh, 3D printers and more, or to work with projects of their choice. And this is from 1 to 5 p.m. or no wait, 1 to 6 p.m. inside the makerspace at the Missoula Public Library. Teen Writers Group is at the in Missoula Public Library. Just everything's at the Missoula Pub Public Library because that's all you need to know. Um, every Friday after school from 3.30 to 5.30, improve your teens writing skills, uh, learn to write, learn to <laughs> improve your writing. It's mostly geared towards teens and, and to improve their writing, and it's a good way to get some positive feedback about the writing. Um, it, starts from, it starts at 3.30 and goes to 5.30, and they have chocolate available. Um, One dollar tumbling at Summit Cheer Athletes. Uh, Su Summit Cheering and Athletics hosts a um, little to 18-year-olds to learn how to Cartwheel, flips, tucks, whatever your goal is to coaches. And this is going to happen at 1920 Montana Avenue, um, starting at 530. And um, happening also tonight is Family Friendly Friday at Top Hat Lounge. If you're getting off work, you have your kids, you'd be like, I need a beer. And go to Top Hat, and, they, and your kids can go run around and be crazy with other kids while you uh, tie one over. Um, yeah, that's, I know, it's, but um, a nice little thing that's happening from my old alma mater high school is uh, Big Sky High School's Blue Note Cafe, it's starting at 7 p.m. tonight, to do some jazz, um, Missoula Big Sky High School Jazz Band is doing a Blue Note Cafe to help raise money for their bands and other trips for their schools and like all Northwest and uh, uh, all state music festivals and all that stuff. Tickets are $10 per person and it goes to a good cause for these uh, amazing band kids who play jazz band. So their trip is going to Washington, D.C. International Band Festival at the Kennedy Center. Uh, Roe vs. Wade Anniversary Comedy uh, Benefit is starting at 7 p.m. at the Roxy tonight. Uh, the, uh, on January 22nd, 1973, the United States Supreme Court ruled in favor of women's rights to have an abortion. 45 years later, they're coming together to recognize the anniversary and to support the groups that are bravely protecting that right. And they, they're doing this by the only, know, the only way they know how, and this is through a night of stand-up comedy at the Roxy Theater, brought to you by the funniest woman and no, non-binary folks Folks that they could wrestle up, including Charlie McCorn, uh, Aislinn O'Connor, Kima Waterfield, Becky Margulies, uh, Sarah Ashwell. Um, you can join on the Roxy, and it's a free night. Uh, it's a it's a night of comedy, plus a few raffles and things. With all proceeds going towards two amazing local local organizations um, to support women and abortion rights. Uh, the Susan. Wicklund Fund and Planned Parenthood. Tickets are $8 and can be purchased at the Roxy or online. Happy Days is going to be, uh, is, has premiered this week. Happy Days, the musical. It stars Fonz, the Cunninghams, and all sorts of, uh, wonderful characters from your 50s nostalgia show that aired in the 70s and it's happy days the musical it's a musical version of happy days um these days are yours and mine these days are happy days. i don't know i don't know the words to this song but you will after you watch this play that'll be pretty much going on this weekend and all next week and tickets are available and uh, by going to the uh, mct box office from 9 to 5 p.m or you can call or box office opens half an hour before the show starts and you can check in with there so uh, here are some of your nightly events. If you guys are planning on going out and about tonight, Top Hat Lounge is hosting um, Susan Santo of Honey Honey. It's going to be folk music. Um, old Post is opening Bon Voyage Party at the Old Post. It's going to be bluegrass electronic music. Troublesome is going to be a country music at the Sunrise Saloon. And Rust Nuts and the Revelators will be at the Union Club. And you're going to enjoy so, so many things happening tonight in and around the downtown area. 
on Saturday, starting this uh, tomorrow morning, is the Frost Fever. For Missoula Regional Park is the 27th annual Winter Fun ro Run Walk in Frost Fever. It also features this year's the XC Ski, XC Ski Race and Fat Tire Bike Race, Disc Golf, Pickleball, and Winter Run at the Fort Missoula Regional Park. All starting at 8 a.m. and pretty much going on most of the day at Fort Missoula Regional Park. Um, Zutan Arts is doing a five-week class. Mindful journal journaling is a wonderful tool for developing a mindfulness practice. In this course, you will be led by fantastic world that brings together their intrinsic creativity with the practice of mindfulness. With this use of guided meditation and journaling, prompting students will gain insights into their deeper self. And this is a five-week course starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning at the Zutan Arts Community Center. Concealed carry class by Legal Heat and Cabela's. If you're interested in basically being a um, getting a carrier for a gun license, it's it's for like a concealed weapon permit. And you get to learn all about that at Cabela's starting at 10 a.m. This is a class. You can go to mylegalheat.com slash Cabela's or you can call them at um, 855-GUN-CLASS. Pretty simple. Uh, ponies and Passes, Winter Storytelling, Travers Rest State Park uh, with volunteer Bruce M Malish t takes us back to a time when the story of ponies and passes to feel the courage and strength they need to get to the cores of Discovery Herring pack trip successfully through the Rocky Mountains on the way to the Great Western Sea. Uh, you get to learn a little bit of history along the way. Uh, Artist Humanitarian Award winner uh, David Wilson is going to be at the Dave, uh, Dana Gallery starting at noon tomorrow, an open house event for local artist David Wilson this month. Uh, Dudley Dana is featuring Wilson at the Dana Gallery for the first ever humanity, uh, Humanitarian of the Year. There will be a award ceremony and open house starting on uh, tomorrow until noon to 5 at the Dana Gallery um, at North Higgins Avenue. Um, Big uh, Mizzou Art Museum, Slow View, Slow View, sorry about that. Uh, Mizzou Art Museum is hosting Slow View, the first of the Slow View series of art discussions running Saturday noon to 1 p.m. MAM's Slow View uh, series invites viewers to focus their attention on selected installment installations and rediscover uh, uh, the rewards of awareness, observation, and engagement. And this um, today, Robert Harrison and Brenda Clements will be doing their conversations at there. The next one is on February 24th, and it's uh, Sheila Miles, The End of Love and Other Natural Disasters. March 13th is Mary Ann Bojorny at Legged Mercury. So those are some things happening at the Mizzou Art Museum, and I suggest you check it out. Free expression, free admission at the Mizzou Art Museum. The Mizzou Art Studio Grand Opening. Speaking of art, wow, there's a lot of art going on here in the city of Missoula, but this is a new F Missoula Fine Art Studio that's opening up. It's near the Clay Studio of Missoula. Um, and this is, they're doing raffles, art studio, and this is going to happen from 4 to 8 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, spend time with a laid back evening in the studio. Tara and uh, um, a lot of artwork will be on display on walls and easels and a free art raffle. Enter to win a free art class, and they will uh, reveal more details and prizes in the next few days. So stay tuned, and you can follow them on their Facebook page by going to the Missoula Fine Art Studio. Um, Mizikin Early Music Festival. Um, I'm totally butchered that, but a historically informed performance. Uh, J.S. Box uh, Christmas Oratorio performance by uh, music, music, music Captain, ugh, Montana of Helena, Forest City Tour, Bozeman, Butte, um, Missoula, Helena, and this happenings from January 18th through the 21st. Tonight, uh, in tomorrow, tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. at St. Saint, uh, Saint Xavier uh, Church, we'll be hosting um, this performance and you guys can check it out um and there's also some sunday stuff as well it's the 11th annual um glam jam grizz cheerleading competition the 11th blah 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 i already said it is an all-star cheerleading competition hosted by the university of montana cheer squad it brings over 200 athletes uh, from missoula the state of montana and idaho for the biggest fundraiser for the um spirit uh, squad program and the largest all-star competition in the state so the doors open at 8.30 a.m. Administer prices, the prices are $7 for adults, $5 for kids age uh, 6 to 17, and if you're five and under, you get in free. Dance Church, um, Downtown Dance Collective hosts Dance Church uh, from 11 to 12.30 p um, uh, p.m. Uh, church is an undeniable, unrespectful, and unequivocal, unbashed time. You may be, want, oh wait, wait, you may be what, Hmm. You. It may be what you want right now. It may be absolutely awfully awesome. 
you may be uh, surprised <laughs> or you may be right at home. It is a non-denominational groove land in the company of others with easy going guidance to dance however you want, experience the joy of dance and anything else you may need. And it all costs us $5. <laughs> um, let me just talk to you guys about uh, some of your late night Friday night, uh, Saturday night events and then I'll let you go. Um, this is happening Saturday night at the Union Club. Um, Missoula Folklore Society Contra Dance. Absolutely with Chris Moon is going to be at the Badlander Karaoke at VFW. Um, Gorgeous Franks is going to be at the Union Club. Um, 406 at the Sunrise Saloon Country. And that's all that's happening tomorrow night on Saturday night. There's some of your late night events for the people who want to stay out a little bit later. Um, but, but if you're interested in finding out more about what's happening in the city of Missoula, go to MissoulaEvents.net to find out more information about this and about that. And if you're interested in learning about MCAT, MCAT is doing our Saturday drop-ins this Saturday from 1 to 5. And that's one to five every Saturday for kids aged um, nine to 13. We're pretty flexible. I wrote down eight to 14, so you know, we're uh, pretty easy going when it comes to kids. It's $10 per kid. It's four hours of stop animation fun. We got some VR. We got some games. We got some wonderful things. This is just a nice way to drop your kids off for part of a Saturday um, and just uh, have them create. And if you're interested in learning about more about my show, you go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice for me to write out twice. Google me at Wake Up Missoula. You can find me on YouTube. You can like me on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter. Three different things, meaning the same thing. Um, all social media and all that wonderful thing. All you got to do is look up Wake Up Missoula to find out that and more. I do have a nice, wonderful song prepared for you guys today. So I will play it for you as I end my show. So Thank you guys for joining me, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp.